Um, wrap up things from the uh, Cal from the uh, NAU game real quick. Uh, internal players of the week on uh, on offense. Travis Johnson. I mean, he was you know probably cost himself two touchdowns with a couple of reads where he, where he should have pulled the ball. One of them was on a fourth down that we didn't convert on. And uh, if he pulls it, it's it's probably a walk in from about 45 yards out. But uh, but he did a great job, I think, of just stepping in and kind of giving us that element that Troy usually does in the plus one run game. I uh, thought he was on point all day. Probably played more physical than I've seen him play. You see him finishing those runs in the fourth quarter. I thought that was awesome. And I think our guys really feed off our leaders when they play a certain way. Our captains, certainly, when they bring that kind of energy, you could tell that really pulled the team with him. And so I was really impressed with uh, the leadership that he provided us as well as the play. On defense, I thought Jacque Allen, I know he had the targeting penalty. Um, you know, I don't think it was a dirty hit at all. I think it was just a bang, bang play. You know, a guy trying to make a play, a guy sliding away from him, it's hard to pull off in that situation. He doesn't know if the guy's going to stay up and catch it. Then it's a completely legal hit, and it's just unfortunate. I think it was the right call. Uh, I just think that's hard, you know, it's hard playing defense anymore. And so, uh, but with that being said, the guy played more physical than I've ever seen him play. Uh, in the screen game, he was kicking and shooting downhill and knocking those guys around. And, uh, you know, obviously had the one mistake in the punt game, but also had a, a significant uh, explosive return that set up our first score. So he did a really nice job. And then JoJo Henderson continues to be not only a productive player for us, we played with three safeties most of the game, um, not only on, on defense, but uh, had a big game for us on special teams and was responsible for that forced fumble on their kickoff return that set up one of our scores. Uh, internal scout players on uh, on offense, uh, Quincy Kent Schneider, walk-on kid from Minnesota who's just kind of an unsung hero for us, just keeps doing really good things for us and is kind of trying to tr starting to work himself into some opportunities. Uh, he's been doing a really good job. Elijah King, uh, another guy that's done a really, really nice job for us. He, he was our defensive player. Quincy was our special teams player. Elijah King's a true freshman from the Sacramento, era, Sacramento California area and uh, can a really hard worker, sharp kid, continues to get better and better. And then uh, Jory Choate on defense uh, did a nice job for us this last week as well. And so with that being said, talk a little bit about Coach Walsh and the boys from Cal Poly. So I'm happy to take any questions. We talked about the, the differences in offenses in this league, but to have Cal Poly sandwiched between Northern Arizona and Sac State could get much more opposite. What's the transition going to be like? Yeah, well, I think, you know, I think it probably helped us that we played him last year. And so um, we hadn't, you know, hadn't played him in my tenure here until last year. And so I do think that that's a benefit. You know, if it had been a couple of years since we played an option team, I think that's where it gets really challenging. And so that, that's the good news. The bad news is, you know, they, they've seen it all. You know, I mean, they, they know exactly, hey, you do this, we do this. You do this, we do this. So they, they're, the, the nature of being uh, a system offense like the triple option, it's really about counterpunching, and uh, I think they do an excellent job of that. And so um, they've been doing it a long time. Uh, I like their new quarterback for. I know he's had some ball security issues last week in the Southern Utah game. They clearly have a lot of depth. We do not have to defend Joe Prothrow. Good news. Bad news is they're, you know, they, they're clones. They got number 22, probably a much faster version, not quite as big as Joe, but uh, he, you know, he's a guy that they'll run uh, load speed option with the fullback. You don't see that a whole lot. That tells you the kind of speed that this kid has to get to the perimeter. And one of the things that I really notice is uh, I think they're more willing to push the ball down the field vertically. San Diego really tried to go all in and pack the box and take care of it. I think they threw for almost 300 yards against San Diego, so that's unheard of. J.J. Koski being the primary target, and he's a, he's a veteran player. Uh, good, good kick returner as well. And so I think those guys are, you know, doing, doing what they do on offense. I mean, it's not going to be a mystery. We just got to stay disciplined and stop it. And it doesn't really matter um, how well you defend it. At some point in time, they're going to create plays. That's just what they do. And so uh, you just got to limit those. And that's going to be a critical part of our success. Do you have to be a little more wary with this Cal Poly team with a passing game than maybe in the past? Well, you know, I, I think it's all about – what you do to limit them in the run and make them predictable because you know they're not like any other like any other offense they get into second and extra long or third and extra long they're going to open the set get in shotgun and they got to throw the ball a little bit because they know uh it's low percentage for them to get eight ten twelve yards on a on a run play and so that's getting in, getting any option team off schedule is important because it takes away a little bit of the element of surprise but i definitely think that they uh, have a new added element last week is not really indicative i think of who they are because the wind at Southern Utah, I mean, try watching the end zone version of this film. I don't think I would have wanted to have been up in that scissor lift down there. I mean, it was, it's crazy. I feel like you're getting seasick watching the end zone copy. But uh, uh, like I said, I think they only threw for 55 yards last week, but I don't think that was indicative of kind of where they're at offensively because I do think they've got a more explosive passing game. Why is it so difficult to silver off playing a team 
just it, it, it's different. Uh, that's the one thing that I can say is, you know, it's very unconventional. You do not see it on a regular basis. And so when you see something like that just every once in a while, you don't practice spring ball, fall camp to, to defeat that. And so uh, the, the difference makes you have to simplify. Um, and again, that, the, the hard part about that is those guys have answers to everything. They've been doing this forever. And so like, they, I mean, it's like the option Bible. Okay, they went to go to page 36. That's what they're doing. They flip to page 36 and, they, and the guys know the answers to the test already. And so that's the hard part about it. And uh, that's why teams do it. That's why a lot of times, uh, you know, high academic institutions, the service academies, they may not go out and get these six foot four, 315 pound athletic offensive linemen. So they create their own advantage. Uh, by you know outflanking people and and adding numbers to a side with motions and unbalanced sets and making you defend all of this stuff that you just don't normally see. There's some guys on your defense that you've been sort of slow playing. You don't want them to get hurt. This style, the cuts and all that stuff. You worry about. Don't care. Yeah. Do not care. I mean, it is what it is. And you, I mean, um, I'm not going to let them care either. I promise you that. So that's that's going to be the whole thing. I mean, it's like uh, it's it's a different style. Um, they've, they've kind of modified some of the cutting rules. I still think there's, there's a lot of places they can go with it. But, uh, you know, I'm sure Coach Walsh feels the opposite way, you know. Um, but it, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're playing Case Cookus and you got to defend the, these vertical routes. That's just as dangerous as what they're going to do to you in the run game. So we've just got to have the right mindset, go down there, play our style physically. Um, you know, maybe we can make this a shorter game since we went to, you know, we're going to California. That would be a rule that if you're in the big sky and you go to California, you don't have to play a night game. And so, um, anyway, I'm sure we'll play a night game when we go play Davis, too. We, we send to we bend over backwards to keep those guys happy down there, I guess. But uh, that's another story. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. got to go play. I feel like you could have a little bit of renewed internal competition, especially amongst the linebackers and the front seven guys, as they kind of battle to see who could be the best guys to stop this sort of attack. Yeah, because stylistically, you're playing different on defense. Uh, and so what might work against a conventional offense, a certain guy's skill set may not be the same in this particular situation. I know we're definitely going to bring more D linemen than we would normally bring. And uh, our linebackers are going to probably play a little bit different style. So uh, the guys that really have the hardest job in some respects, I mean, everybody can say they have a hardest job. But the, the, those secondary guys, I mean, you can get lulled to sleep. And you just have to be so disciplined with your eyes, play in and play out. that Because uh, the second you fall asleep, they're going to find that. That guy's sleeping on the edge, and they're going to run the post or the vertical route, and, and, and those are the ones that can kill you. You give explosive plays to an option offense. You make them earn it. They're going to eat up chunks of time. They're clearly going to have an advantage, uh, most likely in time of possession, which is what they're counting on. They're going to go for it on fourth down on anything, probably fourth and three or less between the 40s. And so they want to try to shorten the game, take away possessions from the offense, force you to defend something crazy, and every once in a while pop that, that big play. Looking back on Saturday, why do you think I think they're confident, you know, and, and I think that when you can roll off the ball and you go, okay, I know where these guys are going to be and all I got to do is do my job, that helps a ton. Um, you know, I think, I, you know, I, I do think in a year, I mean, obviously it's well documented. They had one of their better defensive linemen that uh, left the team in, during the week and I'm sure they had to play some guys that a little bit more than maybe they would have liked to, anticipated to play, but I don't think it would have mattered. I really don't. I don't think 95 would have made any difference because we would have done exactly what we did. Speaking of the offensive line, it seems like Taylor Tuias Sobo, he's been getting some reps, but when he gets in, it seems like you take it. He's starting now. Yeah. He's 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 you know, I guess cut his finger cooking spam and fall camp and kinda had, you know, I mean some of these goofy things that kids do, you know. And uh, and I know that sounds ridiculous for you know him, but uh it it kinda was what it was and it set him back a little bit, but he's the, the thing about Taylor to me is it's not really just how he's 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 one of our more athletic, gifted offensive linemen. It's just his mindset that he's bringing right now. I mean, I love the kid's energy. I thought he's been really, really good on the sidelines in practice. There's a, there's a situation in the game where we kind of, you know, I can't remember if it was Kevin or if it was Quay and the ball, you know, tough day to field punts, obviously. Ball bounces, would have liked to be able, and, I'm, and, you know, of course, I'm getting angry about it. And I listen, there's Tui behind me, and he's like, hey, it doesn't matter. If we got to go 95, we'll go 95. We'll take the ball wherever they give it to us. And I'm like, okay. But that's where he's at right now. He's in a really good place mentally. He's very positive. He's playing at a high level. So I like where that kid's at a lot. You mentioned the long drives. You were able to put two of those back-to-back -to -back together in that second half and go 90-plus yards. It kind of just wear them down. How do you like just being able to, hey, just like Tui said, we'll go 90? Yeah, well, it's easy to play football if you don't have to give the other team the ball. I mean, I can tell you that. So, um, I, you know, 
it's always good to be able to control the field, posi the, the time of possession. I think it was really critical because our defense, especially coming out of the second half, you know, we had a possession where we got a three and out, and then we then muffed the punt. We got to go right back on the field, and I thought that was a critical possession in the game for our defense to rise up in the red zone, hold them to a field goal opportunity, give up three in th instead of seven, and then really that was the ball game. And uh, you wouldn't have said, hey, they got him in checkmate right now, you know, at 31 14, but we had him in checkmate. And so, um, and I think a lot of that was our offense being able to contain, cont control the ball, give our defense time to get fresh, made some adjustments. I think Kane did a really nice job. I mentioned this in the post game of uh, we, we held a couple of things for him in the second half, and I think that gave Case some problems. Uh, six different 100 yard rushers through five games so far seems pretty remarkable. Um, is there anything that surprises you about the way you've been able to mitigate the loss of Isaiah with just that depth? Boy, and Troy. You know, because he's been very limited. I mean, we have not played him a lot on offense um, uh, by design. And so uh, I think that's a credit to, again, the job that our coaching staff is doing and the mentality and the mindset of our team. You know, I think we have built depth, but I think that the leadership, again, I mentioned this earlier, I think the leadership of guys like Travis Johnson and, and you know, Mitch Brott and Kevin Cassis and Derek Marks, the way that guy practices is unbelievable. And it can't help but it, it kind of, you know, bleed into the rest of the team. And, and I really think that's what this is. I mean, I think this is our, our guys setting the standard, our leaders and our seniors setting the standard, and everybody else rising up to that standard. And so when, um, you know, when Isaiah goes down, well, Logan's clearly ready to go. When Logan goes down, you know, Shane and, and, and Lane are ready to go. And, uh, and Demarius Hosey's right there ready to go. We're hoping we don't have to use him. We'd love to redshirt that kid, but if we need him, he's going to be ready to go. And Jahari Martin. Even for a young kid, figuring it out. This is how we do things. And so great job by, you know, Brian with the offensive line, Nate Potter with those tight ends, Matt calling them and setting, setting things up, Denarius with the running back group. I'm really proud of that group on offense because it's easy to, to get discouraged or frustrated. Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. I mean, that's never, I don't, you know, I don't know if I've ever sat in front of you guys and complained about injuries, have I? We, we don't make excuses around here. And so it is what it is. And I say this over and over. Bottom line is nobody cares about your problems and most people are happy that you have them. And so I'm sure Cal Poly hopes Isaiah is not on the plane. That's fine. We got other guys. And you mentioned Denarius. How key has he been kind of setting those guys up for success? Yeah, he's done awesome. I mean, I think he's, you know, Energizer Bunny. I mean, he's in there. The meetings, it's <laughs> our walls are so thin. And the guy is like on nine cups of coffee at five o'clock when he has this meeting. And you can't help but be engaged. And I think that his his – intensity and his passion have definitely bled into that group and really created a uh, he's created an identity within that room that's been really strong for us How has, uh, Jojo Henderson just kind of settled into that role, you know, continuing to I think Jojo's a great story for a number of reasons but probably the biggest is perseverance you know so he went to Lamar out of high school didn't work out transferred to snow JC we kind of bring him in as kind of a he played mostly corner in junior college so you know, our back end was a disaster. We'd take anybody at that point. So we're thinking, well, maybe some corner, maybe some safety. You know, then we have some guys emerge. And, uh, and I think it was hard for him because, you know, he wanted to be the guy. And he, I mean, and this guy, he's a smart guy, very well prepared, um, not afraid of contact, and has made plays for us but didn't get an opportunity to really be kind of an every down guy. But through his perseverance and a positive attitude and approach, now he's getting his opportunity to shine. He's playing some really good football for us. Just obviously the match up with their skill in the pass game, you know, and try to try to give us the best opportunity to cover. I thought, uh, you know, putting Braden down as the down safety where he's physical enough to handle against the run box. Oftentimes when we go to nickel, we're putting like Lavelle Price out there, for example. And Lavelle is, is, is a really good cover guy, but a little bit of a liability in the run games at times because you can run at him. He's 170 pounds. Well, now you put a guy who's played linebacker, put him down closer to the box, 200 plus pound guy, good physical tackler. So he gives you a good presence in a run game. Good blitzer that showed up a couple of times in the game and then uh, still had the ability to run with those guys in the slot. So I thought he was really critical to our game plan because that was probably getting our best 11 on the field against this style. When, when Braden moves down the box, is that your responsibility for Troy? It seemed like he was playing in the box a little bit. We played him at dime. So uh, that was, uh, again, didn't play him a ton, but when we played him, we played him. And, and I, I think some of his coverage looks we gave Case out of that, look, out of that package definitely confused him. He also Almost, yeah. <laughs> He's human. <laughs> um, Marcus Ferger is one of your guys that, that stuck it out through the coaching change and has been here throughout uh, your, your tenure. So what has he just brought to this program? He's, well, he's one of the funniest guys on the team, first of all. So he brings some comic relief from time to time. 
Uh, but, I mean, he's a, he's a glue guy, and, and he's playing a ton of football. For that guy started games for us our first year, you know, and he's, and he's been kind of that guy that's just, I mean, he's never, you know, knock on wood, never been out with injuries, has been so consistent in his toughness. He's really improved as a player. I mean, he's, a, he's not just a guy that's going to give us down. I mean, he can go out and make plays for us. Um, we got to have a couple of Butte guys. I mean, that's mandatory. And so he, he's right now checking that box off, although we're starting to make some traction there. And uh, he's just an awesome kid, man. I mean, he's smart, going to get a great engineering degree, probably going to be a guy that, you know, we call 20 years from now saying, hey, can you help us out with this project? And, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to cultivate things for the long term here at Montana State. But I, I just – um, I love him. I mean, he, Satch is a great kid and awesome, awesome play, player for us and um, probably one of the best guys in our locker room. So we've talked about how hard it is to juggle being an engineering major and playing college sports. How has he handled that? Basically? He's pretty even – I mean, there's some – you know, you can tell when these guys are stressed out. You know, you can tell when they're a midterms or tough exams coming up or really challenging class that they're, they're, they're struggling with. Um, you know, Marcus does a pretty good job of being even keel. Some of the guys, it, I mean, you can tell. I mean, it's like, got to back off on them because they are totally stressed out. And, and that's, uh, that's the balancing act of college, Division I college football, right? And uh, I think that we've got a good perspective here. I think we've got uh, the right balance for our kids to be able to pursue degrees that they want to pursue that are going to be really beneficial for them in the future um, and still play a high level of football. And that's, that's a little bit lost at the Power 5 level. I hate to say it, but that's been my experience. You really emphasized, you know, third down defense during the offseason. Um, you know, obviously having a guy like Bryce helps a lot with that. Uh, you know, how do you feel like your performance has been on third down? I think we're more detailed in the back end on coverage. And I think that's, you know, we don't have a lot of guys running running through zones wide open. We had a couple of those early in the year, but we've tightened that stuff up. And I think we've got some better answers. And, and we have good personnel. You know, clearly the experience does help. And so, um, you know, also those guys seeing – the, the importance of, uh, of that particular statistic in terms of our ability to have success. Do you feel like Kane has really played a key role in that? Yeah, I mean, I think all those guys. I mean, obviously, pressure over coverage. I think Byron's done a great job cultivating the talent that we have in that room and the right mindset. And Bobby's brought good ideas from Idaho and, and, and things that we're doing with the linebackers that allow us to be more flexible. Uh, Kyle Reisinger is kind of a glue guy for us, too. I mean, he's a guy that's been around, has great relationships with the players, really good young teacher. And then Kane has those guys around him and he, he, he utilizes their ideas, and then we get them put in in a way that's very detailed. Tucker Rovey just recovered for the second game in a row, recovered a would-be turnover. How big is that for a team that values the ball? Well, we didn't value the ball very much in the first half of that game. So, um, and even, in, you know, had that one that popped out and the one that Quay let go. I mean, and, you know, the NAU for the first half for sure handled the elements better than we did. And so, um, I mean, Johnny on the spot, play to the whistle, right? And I think that, I mean, he was more excited about that fumble recovery because I think he got a rushing touchdown. So I think that's what that was all about. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, you know, clearly we wanted to recover that thing. That was important. Now, Lane needs to learn that you don't cut back zone on the one yard line, you pour it in, but uh, he'll figure that out. From a pure perspective, have you guys played at Cal Poly since you've been here? I have no, have I have no idea. No. Okay. So what does that mean, Olman, just the sort of the, yeah, I'll be surprised when I get there, I guess. Um, I hear it's going to be better than Western Illinois. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I, I, I was reading about that. And, and uh, yeah, a little scheduling. I think they opened the season at home, and then they played, what, four on the road or three on the road? Yeah. So, and they had a bye in there or something. Yeah, it was weird. They played the non-conference conference game against Weber. And so, yeah, their schedule's been maybe a little bit disjointed. I'm sure they're going to be, you know, excited and glad to be back home. The storyline always for Cal Poly is a triple option. But on the other side of the ball, they do have some unique stuff on defense, too. You guys took advantage of that big time last yeah. year. Did they look the same on defense this year? They, they have a couple new wrinkles. Um, they bring up, you know, I mean, I, think I describe them as a multiple attacking style. They're not a crazy blitz percentage. It's pretty normal, 30% pressure. Um, you know, give you about four different cr coverage looks. They're, um, they move a lot up front. And uh, I'd say the things that concern you the most are their corner pressure. They bring quite a bit of corner pressure, and that's always a tough one to pick up. So that's going to be something we got to pay attention to. I think their linebacker play has improved over a year ago. I think that was an issue for them, and I think their linebacker play has improved. Um, I think they're physical. You know, I mean, that's what they hang their hat on there is running the football, stopping the run. 
Um, and they played, you know, a, a really competitive non-conference schedule and, and, you know, playing Weber. And, and then, you know, even that, that Southern Utah trip is a tough, tough trip, man. And you kind of fell asleep and turned the ball over a little bit. Or that They really had the game kind of in hand until they turned the ball over three times in the second half. With, with Travis, um, you know, when he's in shotgun, taking snaps, I guess, do you feel like maybe to create some more unpredictability and maybe might be passing the ball more? Would you like to see that more? You know, so it's kind of like, I mean, there's a lot of things that our receivers would like to see or that our fans would like to see, but I like to see us getting first downs. And I really like to see defensive linemen on their back with our offensive linemen on top of them. I just, that's something I enjoy. And so um, we don't get to do that a lot when we throw the ball. So, you know, it kind of is what it is. Uh, I, and, you know, I think he's operated that for us very, very well. And, you know, we have some, obviously, there's going to be some other elements to that. And, We've got to continue to develop that package because I think that he's operating at a high level right now. Going against a team that hasn't been home in a while, I mean, they're going to want to come out and just you know, give their home fan, you know, home crowd, something to you know to watch. How important is it going to be to take the momentum out early on in the game and keep that momentum all four quarters? Yeah, well, I'll be honest with you. That's something we talked about at length on Sunday as a staff and with the players. Is why are we so slug sluggish in the first half? You know, and I, I don't give a lot of, you know fire and brimstone speeches before a game because I think that usually lasts about past the opening kickoff. Um, but we've got to do a better job of starting faster. And, and it's not like like what I told our guys, it's not like this is a one-time thing. Now let's go back to last year, you know. And we started slow against, you know, Montana. We started s slow against Incarnate Word. We started slow against North Dakota State. We started slow against SEMO. We started slow. I mean, you, this is a pattern for us now. And the better teams that we play, we can't spot people 21 points. You know, that's not going to be effective for us in terms of our long-term success. I think our guys gain a lot of confidence from knowing that we're never out of a game because of the way that we play and how hard we're going to play in the second half. But um, certainly on the road, you don't want to fall asleep. I mean, you've got to come out with your motor running. And so, you know, we've talked about everything from changing up our pregame, not being in the locker room as long. I'll tell you one thing at home, and, and I'm, you know, this is a nod to our new facility, but – that blockhouse is an awful place to be. It's awful. It's the most awkward setting I've ever been in. I mean, everybody's in the same. It's just like a big open room, and you're just staring at people. There's nowhere where you can kind of get your own space. And I'm not trying to make excuses because we don't do that. But, you know, we've got to figure out a way to, you know, we, we, that, to that point, you know, I'm trying to comb everything. What is it? You know, what do we got to do better, how, different to be able to, 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 you know, come out and have a little bit more of a spark? How about the fans breaking the elements, coming in, staying through the whole game? And, and really Kind of yeah, I'll tell you what, man, they were as loud as I'd heard them in a while in that fourth quarter. And so that was cool. I've been really proud of our students. Like that's the section that usually that clears out first. And I think our students have been amazing. I mean, they've been rowdy from, you know, pregame warmups all the way to singing the fight song at the end. And uh, clearly that's something that we lean on in, in, for our home games. Probably getting a chance to talk to Tucker. What did he learn from a game like uh, last weekend? Well, you know, I think there's always going to be something to learn. He missed some reads in the RPO game, which was things that were available to us. I think one thing, like on his on the pick six, you know, I really felt like that was our fault as coaches because we had repped that thing over the last two weeks a, a, a ton of times, and we'd always given him open, open access to the flat. So he was almost programmed to throw the flat route. They didn't even cover the tight end. I mean, he was completely uncovered on a corner route. Now, I don't know if we'd have got it off because they were bringing field pressure, but – I think we needed to we need to do a better job of constructing multiple looks for the quarterback during the course of the week, so he's not just programmed to spit the ball in the flat. And so while you know, yes, he's got to be able to see the inside linebacker undercutting it and dirt the ball there. Um, I think some of the responsibility lies with us as coaches. We've got to be able to prepare our guys better for such situations like that. But I thought he responded well. You know, I mean, the elements certainly played a factor, but uh, I thought he responded well. And you know, we hit some comeback routes. You know, obviously he hit that dart to to Coy. Uh, in the second quarter to get us some, within a score, and uh, um, you know, didn't you know, didn't didn't hurt us the rest of the game, which was good.